Um, we are going to do, um, we're going to try and put together, uh, it, it's kind of like a, a bingo event or a bingo game that we're going to um, uh, kind of put out to the public to, to try to remind everybody to do some of these healthy habits. Um, so we're working on that. I'll probably have more about that at the beginning of November. Um, our next meeting is November 4th. And then the YWCA um, is doing their wellness for seniors. Um, they have one to two programs every morning. Um, they do it via Zoom. They have Zumba. So you can you know, use those resources as well to stay healthy. Um, and then Valley does their Tuesday walking group on the track. So if you wanna just get out and walk with other people, uh, socially distance, of course, you can do that. Um, Susan, did you want me to do Board of Ed or are you gonna do Board of Ed or Board of yeah, Ed meeting? No, go ahead and do Board of Ed, it's fine. Perfect. So, you know, it was a quick meeting. There really wasn't, you know, they talked about Halloween. They weren't really sure uh, what the process was gonna be. I'm sure each school is gonna have some sort of a, a celebration for Halloween. Um, they talked about the election sites. It looked like it was going to be Somerville, GW, and the library. So it's going to be an abbreviated, uh, and I think Heather mentioned that in her manager's report. Um, they are going to be trimming some branches uh, along the right of way just to make sure that everything's safe and that we don't have any issues there. Um, and then it was a brief conversation about the multifamily dwellings and what schools they would be attending students that may uh, live in those complexes. So um, I don't think the Board of Ed really has um, a firm design on that, but they have options as to where they could go from those different locations. So it was a, it was a quick meeting, really wasn't a lot on the agenda. That's it. Great, thank you. And Reynolds? Thank you, Mayor. Um, no meeting since last week. I just wanted to say tomorrow night we have a citizen safety advisory committee at 7.30 at, um, in the youth center. The public is welcome. We will be socially distanced. And uh, if anybody has anything to say, come to the meeting. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, yesterday, the Shade Tree Commission met uh, via Zoom at 7.30. And um, it, was dis it was a discussion about the um, next five years. Uh, we did have a um, five-year plan that was put together with a consultant via a grant that we received. And uh, I believe we're in the fourth, we're entering the fourth year of that plan. And, um, you know, thankfully a lot of the uh, main goals have been met, uh, mostly planting as many trees as we can and um, getting a tree inventory done were some of the big ones. So um, we're kind of just beginning discussions now. So uh, we don't wait for the, the five years. We'll start in the, the fourth year and come up with some, um, some new goals and some new, um, new objectives to achieve over the next five years. So that was uh, an exciting discussion that's going to continue about the um, tree canopy in Ridgewood. And then I would just like to um, extend a congratulations to Somerville School for their successful um, bronze certification through the Sustainable Jersey for Schools program. So um, I believe they're the first school to um, be certified and um, hopefully some uh, more will follow. And um, that's everything I have right now. Great, thank you. Well, Somerville. Um, I, uh, I just have a couple of items. Um, First, I want to shout out to the Chamber of Commerce Halloween event. Everybody should really get downtown and participate. Personally, I would have been uh, leading the parade as the mayor of Witchwood, uh, but unfortunately, I have a few events, and so I won't be able to do so. But it would have been fun, so everybody should get down there and do that. Um, Access Weekend uh, was a highly unusual event this year, a departure from past years. Uh, as it was an all virtual event for many that have attended Access Weekend in the past, we've had fashion shows, um, entertainment, uh, a lot of tables, resources for our special needs community, everything hosted at the library and uh, down through the village hall. But this year, uh, due to COVID-19, it was a completely virtual event and it was absolutely amazing. So we have a couple of people we want to thank. But first, we'll say, um, please do visit the Ridgewood Public Library page. Uh, website, take a look, go to the links, take a look at what went on for Access Weekend, which is really nice that it was virtual because it's just there for everyone to continue to watch over and over and appreciate uh, our differences. Uh, it's also posted on our um, Access Ridgewood Facebook page. 
uh, my Facebook mayor page, the Ridgewood Public Library Facebook page, uh, the Ridgewood Public Library website, and Dylan, I think we can probably put a link onto our page uh, for that as well. It's really just an amazing event and um, we really appreciate all the work that everybody did. And so we just want to thank a couple of people, Ashley Gloria for her uh, incredible talents uh, with technology. She's a tech guru and she really pulled this weekend off without a hitch. Terry Wallace, our outreach librarian, Carolyn Meyer for her work on the fashion show, and Karen Sheehy for the work uh, done for entertainment. Erica Dunkley, who is our um, access uh, secretary, Lisa Gardner, our treasurer, Robin Nitter, our co-chair, and Inez Bonda, who is our chairperson. Um, these folks work really hard, um, especially Erica, Lisa, Robin, and Inez, um, meeting regularly to make sure that uh, our special needs community, members of our special needs community have information available to them, resources, uh, job opportunities, job training, everything they need, the special needs community, um, whatever we can do to help, they're, they're always right there for them. So we really appreciate uh, those efforts. Um, and I think that is all I have. Okay, so we're good. Um, oh, I did have one question for Heather. I'm sorry. The polling, the when people drop their ballots off at the polling place, that you said they have to sign in, <clears throat> yes, to sign into a book. But those, if they put their ballots into the ballot box there, those are not then considered provisional. You're saying they have to take the ballot that they received in the mail, they sign into a book. It seems to be a lot of confusion. I don't know if anyone. Yeah. If they if they bring it to the uh, polling location, they bring their ballot all sealed. They have to sign the book, and then they can put it into the ballot box at the polling location. If they choose, they could put it in the ballot box here off the parking lot of Village Hall. It's a red, white, and blue box. It says ballot box, and those get picked up daily, uh, seven days a week. And it's picked up by a Republican and a Democrat driven by a sheriff's officer and they go directly back to the county. So, um, you know, I highly encourage people to do that if you're comfortable with that or you can do it via regular USPS mail if you choose. But the ballot boxes, as I said, get picked up daily, seven days a week. So, you know, if you put them in, they'll probably be picked up and I've seen a steady stream of people dropping off their ballots in that ballot box. So I encourage you to do that if you're um, able to do so. Okay. Um, I just wanted to mention one other thing, uh, which I forgot. We do have mobile testing tomorrow at the Graydon Pool parking lot from 9 to 2.30 p.m., 9 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. for COVID-19, as well as um, they're going to give out flu shots if you haven't gotten your flu shot yet. Um, so we encourage you to go. There will be no antibody testing. It's just a straight um, COVID-19 test, but if you, always wanted to be tested and weren't, or if you feel perhaps you have symptoms of COVID, um, please go to it. It's um, covered by, uh, you know, insurance, there is no charge. And then I had one other question for uh, Councilman Perrin. Is that CBDAC meeting um, that downtown New Jersey, is that by Zoom? You're muted. You're muted. Yes, it is by Zoom. And so if, um, because, you know, all these meetings are public, they're open to the public. And I just wondered where do they get the Zoom info for that meeting? Is it published? Do we have it on the website? And I guess that two things, that would hold true to everyone who's doing Zoom meetings so that people know that. And um, the other thing is just as an aside, Pam, sorry, um, that we will just remind everyone to notify their new members to their boards and committees to make sure they're included on the email distribution list. But Pam, just how do we get that information? Where's I've just been telling people to to email me and I will forward the link to them. Okay. So maybe we can get those meetings posted on the website. I don't know if there's just a we general. Can do that. Yeah. Okay. That would be helpful. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. All right. So moving on, there are no ordinances for Ridgewood Water. Um, the follow now we're up to resolutions for Ridgewood Water. The following resolutions, number 20-294 through 20-299, are to be adopted by a consent agenda with one vote by the Village Council. They will be read by title only. Award contract payment processor for Ridgewood Water Billing. Award professional services contract, public policy consultant services and water consortium. Award additional award of contract servicing and repairing of electric source at various locations. Award additional partial award of contract, resurfacing and repair of various village streets. 
award lease of property, wireless telecommunications and antennas, and support facilities, Glen Avenue water tank, and declare property surplus for Ridgewood Water Department vehicles. They have a motion? So moved. Second. Perrin? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Eden? Yes. Walsh? Did I hear Walsh? I didn't hear yes. <laughs> Sorry. Ed Newton. My voice cracked. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and me, yes. I'm, okay, I'm, thanks. Okay, very good. Okay, moving on to ordinances, introductions. I move the first reading of ordinance 3815. Second. Perrin? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Eden? Yes. Walsh? Yes. Newton? Yes. So awarded, will the clerk please read ordinance 3815 by title? An ordinance to amend chapter 265 of the Code of the Village of Ridgewood Vehicles and Traffic at section 265-59, Schedule 9, Stop Intersections, and at section 265-60, Schedule 10, Yield Intersections. I move that ordinance 3815 be adopted on first reading and that November 9th, 2020 be fixed as a date for the hearing thereon. A second. I second the motion. Karen? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Eden? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yeah. I'll move the first reading of Ordinance 3816. Second. Perrin? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Okay. Uh, Reynolds? Yes. Eden? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. So what did the clerk please read ordinance 3816 by title? An ordinance amending the land use ordinance of the village of Ridgewood to amend chapter 190 land use and development to require an affordable housing set aside consistent with the village's adopted 2020 third round housing element and fair share plan. Uh, I move that ordinance 3816 be adopted on first reading and that November 9th, 2020 be fixed as the date for the hearing thereon. Second. Perrin? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Eden? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. I move the first reading of Ordinance 3817. A second. Perrin? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Eden? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. So, Ward of the Clerk, please read Ordinance 3817 by title. An ordinance amending the land use ordinance of the village of Ridgewood to amend chapter 190 land use and development to create the AH3 zone district consistent with and designed to effectuate the village's adopted 2020 third round housing element and fair share plan. I move that ordinance 3817 be adopted on first reading and that November 9th be 2020 be fixed as the date for the hearing thereon. I second the motion. Aaron. Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Eden? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. I move the first reading of Ordinance 3818. Second. Perrin? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Eden? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. So, Ward of the Clerk, please read Ordinance 3818 by title. An ordinance amending the land use ordinance of the Village of Ridgewood to amend Chapter 190, Land Use and Development, to add and amend the B1 and B2 districts consistent with and designed to effectuate the village's adopted 2020 third round housing element and fair share plan. I move that ordinance 3818 be adopted on first reading and that November 9th, 2020 be fixed as the date for the hearing thereon. Second. Aaron? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Eden? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. I move the first reading of Ordinance 3819. Second. Perrin? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Eden? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. So, what did the clerk please read Ordinance 3819 by title? An ordinance amending the land use ordinance of the Village of Ridgewood to amend Chapter 190 Land Use and Development to create the B3 district, consistent with and designed to effectuate the Village's adopted 2020 third round housing element and fair share plan. I move that Ordinance 3819 be adopted on first reading and that November 9th, 2020 be fixed as the date for the hearing thereon. Second. Karen? Yes. Reynolds? 
I'm sorry. I didn't hear. Uh, you're muted. Oh, sorry, yes. Uh, Seaton? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. I move the first reading of Ordinance 3820. Second. Aaron? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes, so we will call, please read Ordinance 3820 by title. An ordinance amending provisions for Article uh, 13 growth share for affordable housing. I move that Ordinance 3820 be adopted on first reading and that November 9th, 2020 be fixed as a date for the hearing thereon. Second. Perrin? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Seaton? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. Before we continue, I just wanted to ask Matt um, to, to those ordinances that we just introduced because they're part of our settlement agreement. If you just wanted to touch on that briefly um, so that everyone understands what it is we just did. It's a lot of affordable housing and, and admin issues. So just maybe if you don't mind. Well, I mean, we had discussed it again last week, Susan, unfortunately you weren't there, but basically these ordinances uh, put into effect the you know the different provisions of the settlement agreement that was reached between um, the Fair Share Housing Center, the village, that was approved by the court, and um, and also um, uh, encompasses all the aspects of what our uh, Fair Share Housing element is, the one that was just recently uh, reviewed by the planning board and endorsed by the council. So. Basically, the, these ordinances were required, and as much as the fair, um, our housing element is a policy, these ordinances actually make the development uh, pot potential a reality in the sense that they um, they put into effect and all those policy issues that we've decided through our settlement agreement and our fair share housing element, and they're all designed to set up the the different zones that we have set up for overlay zones. It deals with Valley Hospital. It deals with a number of other aspects of our settlement agreement and puts into place, you know, the, uh, the, the ability for uh, future affordable housing units to be developed in the, in the, in the village and uh, sets us up basically for meeting the, the next round, the 2025 round um of of affordable uh, review so um you know we're it, it really is just the reality that has become um now from the policy that was set before with the settlement agreement and the fair share housing element so hopefully that's what you hopefully that's what you were looking for no and actually i was just looking for an explanation for the public i i you know lived through it so i just want to make sure i think it's important every time okay every opportunity to restate and to refresh everyone's memory because it's something we worked on since i think 2017 16 17 18 so it's been you know a process and i just think again it's important to restate it and refresh everyone's memory well i could go through i mean i, I could go through each ordinance and talk about what it what it means um if that's what you were looking for but you know that's kind of yeah yeah, no, I, don't, I, just, I think that is. So okay. I just don't want anyone to, you know, I want the public to understand exactly what we're doing. And no, it was a, yeah, and it was a very, very, it was a very long process. And obviously, this lawsuit um, that we had for declaratory judgment that we had met our burden of providing affordable housing, and that the court found that we had met it, that we acted in good faith all throughout the earlier rounds and into this round, that in terms of the developments that are going on in the town that are actually. You know, now becoming a re becoming um, so developed that they are, uh, you know, beginning to accept um, uh, potential renters in their uh, different projects. Um, you know, we've we've adhered to the the guidelines that have been set up by the um, um, by the state and by the Supreme Court, and uh, the court has reviewed it, approved it, and we've avoided a, a number of pitfalls that many other towns have hit which are developers suits, um, which are um, also, you know, paying legal fees for the uh, fair share housing center. Um, you know, there are a number of towns that are still battling all their way through, but we've been able to, to work at it and meet a, um, the criteria along with 
uh, developers and with the Fair Share Housing Center. Um, it's got a number of facets to it. Uh, the settlement agreement is a public document. If anybody wants to read it, the settlement agreement gives the outline of everything that is being included in our in our um, affordable housing elements for the for the community, and uh, also sets forth what's going to be happening in the in the future zones with the overlay zones and with Valley Hospital, because uh, Valley Hospital is going to be moving to Paramus when they've completed the development over in Paramus, and in that regard. Um, you know, the, the property at Valley Hospital could possibly another, could be another site for affordable housing. So we've included that in the plan as well. So we've planned that out into the future and um, uh, setting up these ordinances allows, you know, somebody to come in and just see where we are and how we're going about dealing with our constitutional mandate to provide affordable housing. So, um, you know, it's multifaceted, as I said, and the settlement agreement, if anybody wants to really look at it, is really, and, and the fair share housing element, the, the, the fair share plan, is really the, the, the two documents that really outline what we've done and how we've gone about meeting the criteria that we're obligated to do. So thank you. And as always, I just want to say thank you to Matt and Beth McManus because it was the best team to work with. Um, okay, and so also, um, I believe the Dayton is now accepting applications for affordable housing. So that's how we're uh, Piazza and Associates. Is that right? So, Piazza, and I think Piazza and Associates. We, hopefully we have that up online now. A lot of people are asking and uh, that should be accessible to everyone who needs. So it's it's really important. So thanks yeah. for that. Yeah, yeah. Piazza yeah. and Associates is our, just so everybody knows, is our affordable housing administrator. So. Right. Okay, great. So thanks, Matt. Thank you again. And thanks, Pam, for reminding us. Okay. Okay, so um, moving on. I move the first reading of Ordinance 3821. Second. Aaron. Yes. Reynolds. Yes. Eden. Yes. Walsh. Yes. And Newton. Yes. So order the clerk, please read ordinance 3821 by title. An ordinance to amend chapter 145, fees of the village code for grade and pool membership fees. I move that ordinance 3821 be adopted on first reading and that November 9th, 2020 be fixed as the date for the hearing thereon. Second. Aaron? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Eden? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. I move the first reading of Ordinance 3822. Second. Aaron? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Eden? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. So, what is the clerk please read Ordinance 3822 by title? An ordinance to amend Chapter 145 fees of the Village Code for tennis membership fees. I move that ordinance 3822 be adopted on first reading and that November 9th, 2020 be fixed as the date for the hearing thereon. Second. Perrin? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Eden? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. I move the first reading of ordinance 3823. Second. Perrin? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Eden? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. So what did the clerk please read ordinance 3823 by title? An ordinance to amend chapter 145 fees of the village code for day camp fees. I move that ordinance 20, 3823 be adopted on first reading and that November 9th, 2020 be fixed as a date for the hearing they are on. Second. Aaron? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Eden? Yes. Walsh? Yes. And Newton? Yes. We have no public hearings of ordinances. So the following resolutions, number 20-300 through 20-328 will be adopted by a consent agenda. We won't vote by the village council. They will be read by title only. Award contract disposal of recyclable materials. Award contract printing of 2021 village calendar. Award contract sale of compost material. Title 59 approval furnishing and delivering of sodium bisulfite solution and sodium hypochlorite solution water pollution control facility. Award contract furnishing and delivering of sodium bisulfite solution and sodium hypochlorite solution water pollution control facility. Title 59 approval furnishing laboratory analysis services, water pollution control facility, and Graydon Pool. Award contract 
Furnishing Laboratory Analysis Services, Water Pollution Control Facility, and Graydon Pool. Title 59 Approvals, No Plowing Services. Award Contracts, No Plowing Services. Award Contract under State Contract, In-Car Camera Storage Server, Police Department. Award Contract under State Contract, Zetron Radio System, Police Department. Award Contract under State Contract, Ammunition, Police Department. Award Contract under State Contract, Portable Radios, Police Department. Award Contract under National Joint Powers Alliance Cooperative Purchasing Agreement, Front End Loader, Streets Division. Award Contract under Source Wall Cooperative Purchasing Contract, Self-Contained Compactor Recycling Department. Award Contract under National Cooperative Purchasing Alliance, Final Phase of Security Upgrade, Village Hall, and Additional Items. Award Contract under Passaic Valley Sewerage Commission's Cooperative Pricing System, Purchase and Installation of Pumps and Appurtenances, Water Pollution Control Facility. Award Professional Services Contract, 2020 Annual Audit, Authorized Shared Services Agreement, E-Procurement Software with Bergen County. Award Additional Partial Award of Contract, 2020 Resurfacing and Repairs of Various Streets, 2019-2020 NJDOT Municipal Aid Grant Program. Award additional award of contract, Kings Pond Restoration. Declare property surplus, Ridgewood Parks and Recreation. Declare property surplus, Streets Division Vehicle. Establish guidelines to permit electronic signatures on purchase orders and vouchers. Temporarily suspend enforcement of certain ordinances to allow outdoor lighting in the public right of way. Change start date for outdoor cafes in 2021. Establish annual service charge and payment for guarantee bond for Ridgewood Senior Citizen Housing Corporation and guarantee of payment of revenue bonds. Accept 2019 annual audit and approve 2019 corrective action plan. We have a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Perrin. Yes. Reynolds. Yes. Eden. Yes. Walsh. Yes. And Newton. Yes. The following resolutions, number 20-39 through 20-3030, will be um, considered separately and read in full. 20-329, whereas the Village of Ridgewood Water Department acquired property at 111 North Maple Avenue, more specifically known as Block 3607, Lot 41 on the tax maps of the Village of Ridgewood, for the purposes of renovating the building for Water Department staff. Whereas the professional services of the architectural firm RSC Architects of Three University Drive, Hackensack, New Jersey, was approved by Resolution 20 176 in the amount of $200,000 on June 17, 2020, for the design and construction administration of the renovation project. And whereas RSC Architects presented the Village Council with the professional design floor plans, building facade drawings, and renderings and site plans options on October 7, 2020. And whereas the comments from the Village Council regarding pedestrian access, solar panels, and parking were recorded by RSC. And whereas Ridgewood Water and RSC will next present the architectural and engineering plans to the Village of Ridgewood Planning Board on October 20th, 2020. Now therefore be it resolved that the Village Council of the Village of Ridgewood approves the design concept subject to review by RSC of the comments raised at the meeting of October 7th, 2020. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Parent? Yes. Reynolds? Yes. Teton? Yes. Walsh? No. And Newton? Yes, and I just want to say I'm really excited about this project. I'm, I'm really super excited about the opportunity to provide educational programming uh, for water conservation. I think it's right up Pam's alley, so I think it's it's like really, really exciting, and I guess Mike too. So it's, it's fabulous, and uh, it's just exciting. An opportunity like this doesn't come along every 10 years or even every 20 years. It's so true. It's so true. It's really just so exciting. So, thank you. Resolution number 20-330. Whereas the Village Council of the Village of Ridgewood adopted resolution number 20-269 on September 9, 2020, which established a pilot program to set fees for the use of various village parks, fields, parking lots, the Cashwell Memorial Bandshell, and the Graydon Pool patio by local groups, organizations, and businesses. And whereas the fees to use these village facilities or properties are based on whether the local groups, organizations, or businesses are nonprofit, in which case the charge is $150 per hour, or for profit, in which case the charge is $200 an hour, as well as additional hourly charges for personnel, sound equipment, and other associated costs. 
Aware since the pilot program began, it has been recognized that this pilot program does not take into account Ridgewood-based nonprofit groups, organizations, or businesses, which are service organizations providing services to the village of Ridgewood or other organizations within the village of Ridgewood. Whereas many of these Ridgewood-based nonprofit service organizations have traditionally used village parks, fields, parking lots, the Cashville Memorial Band Shell, and the Graydon Pool Patio for events for their members at no charge, with the requirements of providing liability insurance, which names the Village of Ridgewood as an additional insured and a hold harmless agreement for the event. And whereas these Ridgewood-based nonprofit service groups, organizations, or businesses should not be penalized by having to pay a fee for the use of village facilities or properties when they did not have to do so in the past. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Village Council of the Village of Ridgewood, the effective immediately immediately and for the duration of the pilot program. The Village of Ridgewood shall not charge a fee for the use of various village facilities or properties to Ridgewood-based nonprofit service groups, organizations, or businesses which perform services for the Village of Ridgewood or other organizations within the Village of Ridgewood. And be it further resolved that all other items which are necessary to use any village facilities or properties, which include but are not limited to liability insurance, which names the Village of Ridgewood as an additional insured, a hold harmless agreement, and any other items necessary to ensure that all the properties and facilities are appropriately used shall still be in effect. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Perrin. Yes. Reynolds. Yes. Eden. Yes. Walsh. Yes. And Newton. Yes. Great. With that, um, we're going back to comments from the public, not to exceed five minutes per person. Is Dylan there? I am here. Okay, great. Anybody have any comments, please raise your hand. If you're on the phone and dialed in, you can press star six to raise your hand. Let me ring in the caller just in case that they're having issues. Hold on one second. Good evening. Please unmute. Press star nine. If you'd like to make a public comment. Hello, caller. Please unmute if you'd like to make a public comment. I'm not showing any. Okay. All right. All right. With that, um, I guess we'll end public comment and take a resolution to go into closed session. Okay. Be resolved by the Village Council of the Village of Ridgewood that the Village Council meet in closed session on October 14, 2020, at 8 p.m., or soon thereafter, as a matter on the agenda can be reached. And this debt closed session be held via Zoom teleconferencing due to the COVID 19 pandemic. Be further resolved that the matters to be discussed in closed session are limited to personnel matters to include FMBA negotiations and legal matters to include lease of public property. These matters are allowable under NJSA 10 column 4 12 at SEC. And be further resolved that the minutes of this meeting shall be made available to the general public when such matters have been deemed completed by resolution of the village council. I have a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Thank you. Hey everybody stay safe. Aye. We'll see you the next meeting. So into closed session for the rest of us. How do we do that? Do we go to a different number? Yeah, it's a different number. Uh, it sent it to your email. Okay. All right. Goodbye. See you there in a minute. Stay safe, everyone.